Hey everyone, welcome to the broadcast. I'm Dwayne Sheriff and this is the Grace and Truth broadcast. Well, I'm really excited about the next few sessions that we are going to have together. And man, we have prayed for you. We're praying over these broadcasts and that you can be a part. What God has put on my heart and that I've been actually ministering on recently publicly in our conferences is this process of change the power of God in our lives, the supernatural power of God and the promise that God has made us of change. If there was one thing I struggled with early in my Christian life, that was change. I wanted to change. I desired change. I was hungry, if you will, to change and yet I didn't understand the process of change in my life as a Christian. I didn't understand the promise that God had made me. No one told me God had promised me to be able to change supernaturally and that there was a power, the grace of God in my life to change. So I struggled. I failed miserably. I'm embarrassed at what a failure I had become. I actually got born again in 1965, had a tremendous hunger for God, but failed. And then I would get back up and, and have this hunger for God and want to change and be all God's called me to be. I wanted to do great and mighty things in His kingdom, but just continued to fail. And it was like it was systemic. Systemic failure was in my life, and I didn't know how to break out of it. So God has taught me these things. I've lived them. I've experienced them. And I'm telling you, as a Christian, there's no greater joy than the ability that comes from God to change supernaturally. And this is important in the, Christian, in the Christian life. We must change. And the reason we must change is because God doesn't. Amen. You need to think about that. Why do we need to change? Because God doesn't change. And in this relationship, if we're for real, if we are authentic believers, then we have to to be the one that's changing in the relationship we have with the Lord. Malachi 3.6 says, I am the Lord your God and I change not. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what does that mean in the first place? I'm the Lord God and I, I change not. God in His nature doesn't change. God in His character doesn't change. God in His virtue and in His holiness doesn't change. And that in and of itself was confusing for me as a young person coming into the kingdom of God. While God doesn't change, how He deals with us has changed over the, over the decades. You can read from Genesis all the way again to the law of Moses and God related to us differently before the law. Romans chapter 5 verse 12 says that before the law, sin was in the world, but where there was no law, sin wasn't imputed. Think about that. God before the law of Moses wasn't imputing man's sin against him. Then when the law of Moses came, there was wrath there was judgment. There was curses associated with the Old Testament law and sin was imputed. So while God didn't change in His nature, character, and love for us, how He related to humanity did change from creation to the law and under the law. And then because of the cross, there's been a, a change. There's a new covenant. The old covenant is fading away and now the new covenant is being established and God relates to us differently under new, new Testament, New Covenant grace than He did under the Old Testament, Old Testament law. So that was confusing is my point for me as a young person that while God doesn't change, how He deals with us and sin has changed. And so we need to understand that as well. Now, it's important as we begin to, to launch this new direction in supernatural change, that we understand through the new birth, God's divine design for you is change, is change. It is a constant. Change is a constant in our lives 
and in God's plan for our lives. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 says, To everything there's a season. To everything there's a season. To everything there's a, a time table and a time limit. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. There is a time to be born. And then there's a time to die. There's a time to plant. There's a time then to harvest. See, that's change. There's a time to tear things down and a season of tearing things down and then a time to build things up, a time to cry, a time to laugh, a time to grieve, a time to dance. I think you're getting it. The writer is explaining change and the process of change and that change again is a constant we cannot get around God's plan and divine design for change in our lives, in our, our vocations. And again, we must change, and change is a constant with us because God never changes. As a matter of fact, your predestination, dear ones, our predestination in Christ is change. Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 28 says... And we know that all things work together for good to them who love God and to them who are called according to His purpose. God loves you and now you need to love Him back. And He has a purpose, a plan for your life. Listen to verse 29. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed in the image, into the image of His dear Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Man, God's predestination for your life. God in his foreknowledge predestinated you and I for change. What's that change? To be conformed into the image of his dear son. Conform means shape like, look like, poured into the mold of. God's plan for your life is to be poured into the mold of Jesus, to look like Jesus to exercise authority in the earth like Jesus, to love people like Jesus, to be honest and candid with the, with the culture and with religion all around us like Jesus was. This demands change. To be like Jesus demands change in our lives. So that's God's plan. And so I wish someone would have sat me down and explained in simplicity what I just did with you so that I would know God is committed to change in my life. God is with me in the change in my life. Well, the scripture God used to transform my life is in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, but I want to remind you of even Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says that we're not to be conformed to this world, but we are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we might prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. You and I will never prove. The word prove there in Romans chapter 12 means demonstrate. We'll never demonstrate. We'll never experience practically God's good, acceptable, and perfect will for our life if we're not transformed. That word transformed means change. It absolutely means a metamorpha in the, in the Greek, and we get our English word metamorphosis from that, and that's the radical change. A metamorphosis is the radical change in the structure of an animal by supernatural means. God wants us to no longer, as his people, be conformed into the image of the, of the world. And that's what the entire culture is attempting to do to you, your children, your grandchildren, your friends, your co-workers. The devil is trying to conform everyone into this image, this mold of worldliness. And God says, resist that. Don't be that. Well, how do I keep from being conformed into the image of the world and the imposition that the world is endeavoring to impose upon us. I have to be renewed in the spirit of my mind. I have to see things from God's perspective and renew my carnal, unrenewed mind in order to change. So let's talk about the process then. Let's talk about the promise. Let's talk about the power 
for change in our lives because God is committed to the process. You may be discouraged. I'm so excited that you're watching right now because I know untold hundreds of people that are discouraged because of the inability to change into the, into the plans God has for them. And so we're going we're gonna to talk about that process. Well, Paul compares in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, he compares the old covenant law and the glory of that law. And even though it was glorious, it condemned and it destroyed and there was a purpose for that. We don't have time to get into that now. But there was glory to the old covenant law. But that that glory, once it fulfills its purpose, which is bringing us to Christ, it must fade away. And then he talks about the glory of the new covenant, the New Testament, of this born again spirit of righteousness and being made righteous now. And he goes back and forth with the example even of Moses and how Moses beheld the glory of God and it was shining on his face so bright when he came off of Mount Sinai with the Ten Commandments, his face was shining with the glory of God, with, with seeing the glory of God, with beholding the glory of God that he had to put a veil over his face because it intimidated the children of Israel. It made them uncomfortable Man, when we're not serving God, when we're not pursuing God, someone who is serving God can actually make you feel uncomfortable. And so they are intimidated by the glory on his face, so he covered it. And Paul is encouraging us not to do that, not to cover up the glory of God in our lives, but to now live with an open face in other words, live our Christianity not in a closet or behind four walls or this self-quarantine that the church has put on itself, but to make sure that everywhere we go, we're reflecting the glory of God that has changed us. And he actually outlines how change happens. The Lord spoke to me years ago out of these verses and they revolutionized my life. I mean, it shook my world up. And I, if I'm honest, have to admit that there are a lot of scriptures I read in the Bible I struggle with, and I'm not sure what God is saying, and I have to really knock. I have to ask. I have to seek and, and pursue God in understanding. This scripture just came alive. So let me read it right quick. And then we're going to come back to this process of change. In, in uh, 2 Corinthians, I apologize, I, I didn't go there. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, Paul says, Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. When God's Spirit comes into your life, when you get born again, and specifically spirit-filled, then there's a liberty that comes, a freedom that comes. Now, this freedom and this liberty that Paul is speaking of is not a freedom and a liberty to, to live in sin, celebrate sin, practice sin. No, that's what Jesus died for us for, to bring us out of. Boy, that is so simple, but yet I've discovered that the body of Christ at large hasn't discovered why God saved us, why God delivered us. God didn't deliver you. Jesus didn't die for your sins so you could live in them and so you could celebrate them and so you could practice them. We don't need Jesus to die for our sins if we're going to remain slaves to sin. So when you accept Jesus and you're born again and you're filled with the Holy Spirit, there is a freedom now and a liberty in the Holy Spirit and by the Holy Spirit to break the power of sin and to now empower you in any sin to run to God now, not from God. Boy, that, that's powerful. That if or when I sin, I feel convicted. The Lord chastens me because I'm His child now over sin and now there's a liberty not to run from God, 
with guilt and condemnation, but there is a liberty now to run to God and receive my forgiveness and cleanse my conscience, confess my sin, because I have an advocate, Jesus Christ, who is an intercessor for me and loves me and died specifically for whatever failure I may experience, whatever temptation and sin I may enter into, Jesus is my advocate. He's like a lawyer that represents me before the Father, and I can run straight to Him because I'm made righteous and truly holy. Boy, that's a whole different teaching right there, and everyone needs established in righteousness, how that you've been made righteous by the blood of the Lamb. Your righteousness is not based on your holiness, your works, but on the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so you can come boldly, Hebrews 4.16 says, you can come boldly to the throne of grace, not the throne of wrath, not the throne of guilt and condemnation. You can come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy. Amen. I don't know about you, but boy, when I mess up, thank God there is a liberty to run to Jesus knowing that he will not be be angry at me or curse me or condemn me or shame me, but will be merciful to me. And then Hebrews 4.16 says, Come boldly to the throne of grace that you might obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. There's no greater time of need than when you fall into sin or you stumble into sin or you're tempted and, and you enter the temptation of sin. No greater need in your life. Boy, I don't care what the culture is saying. I don't care what the backslidden church world is declaring. If you are born again, you are a child of God. You've been made the very righteousness of God. And that doesn't mean you never sin. It doesn't mean it's impossible for you to sin. It means you don't want to sin anymore. If you're watching me right now and you enjoy sin, you celebrate sin, you deny the Word of God that defines sin, then I question whether or not you've made Jesus Lord of your life. And you need to consider the error of your way and repent. Find true repentance and get born again. Get filled with the Holy Spirit. And now read the Holy Bible and realize that we are to be a holy people. Because I have experienced a new birth, I am filled with the Holy Spirit, it doesn't mean I don't make mistakes. It doesn't mean I'm perfect after my flesh. But it does mean that there is a liberty that I have found to run to God, not from God. And that whatever weakness is in my flesh, whatever struggle I or you are having with sin of any nature or unholiness, God loves you. And he loves you the way you are. Now listen, you better hear the rest of it or you're going to get confused fast. God loves you the way you are, but he loves you too much to allow you to stay the way you are. He has made a way of escape through the cross and by the blood of Jesus. And now there's liberty to run to God now and not from God. There's liberty, hallelujah, to confess my sin and to be cleansed in my conscience and to be empowered by the same grace that brings me forgiveness and the cleansing of my conscience for any kind of sin in my life, there's a grace now to submit unto God, resist the devil and he will flee. Submit unto God's holiness, resist sin and the author of sin. Submit to the author of our holiness God and resist sin, the author Satan, and he will and he will flee. Thank God for this liberty that's come, this power, this God with us, this God now in us. And then he goes on to say in verse 18, but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Wow. I don't know if some of you are watching and that's the first time you've ever heard that. Some of you have heard it, and I pray it comes alive for you like it did for me many, 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 many years ago. That just outlines the promise God has made of supernatural change. That one verse makes nine statements 
of the supernatural power of God and process of change now in our lives. And I'm going to be getting into this in detail in my next, my next broadcast. And I hope that you can be with us. I'm actually probably going to get into on why it's so difficult for so many people to change. Why was it so difficult? I went 15 years, brothers and sisters, 15 years struggling with change. I had no idea that there was a promise like this of supernatural change. I thought I had to try harder to change. When that verse, verse 18 says, change doesn't come by trying harder. Change comes by trusting God. Change doesn't come with my willpower. I actually attended church as a young person for many years all by myself. My family wasn't serving the Lord, but I was seeking change. I was seeking God's will. I was seeking this predestination to be conformed into the image of God's dear son. And all I ever heard, and I'm not being critical of any of the churches I was raised in, but I was just encouraged that change does come in the believer's life by trying harder. Change comes by willpower. Change does not come by willpower, not lasting change, not healthy change, not long-term positive change. It doesn't come by willpower. It comes by God's power. And no one told me that. And so I'm going to be processing this for you. I'm going to be walking you through this process of supernatural change, how God has promised, God has empowered us to change. And what is this, what is this process of change? But before we get into that, I want to deal with why then was it so hard on me for 15 years? Why was it, if God has provided the promise of change, if God has provided the power of change, if God has provided a process of change, why was change so difficult me, excuse me, why was change so difficult for me for 15 years? Well, I'm going to cover five reasons on why change is so difficult for people. Even though God has supernaturally promised change, if you don't understand these five things and deal with them and turn to God, set your will. While change doesn't come by willpower, you do have to will to change and set your will on change. And we'll talk about, we'll talk about that as well. Again, nine statements in one verse. Be thinking about that between now and our next broadcast, verse Verse 18 outlines nine statements of supernatural change. And I look forward to, to going over that with you. Well, I'm running out of time on this broadcast, and so I just want to encourage you to get a hold of us. We'd love to pray for you. We'd love to help you access all of our free material. We have thousands of messages available for you, free, no charge, on our website. All you need to do is go to pastordwayne.com, pastordwayne.com. It'll take you to our homepage, and you'll see the different series that we have. I actually have a series called The Power, The Process, and The Promise of God for Change, and that'll be a blessing to you. Going over that material, you can download that for free. We also have prayer warriors available to stand in agreement with you for any need in your, in your life and in your family. You can contact us at area code 580, area code 580-4040-DSM. That's area code 40, excuse me, that's area code 580-4040-376. Man, we'd love to hear from you. I'd really like to hear from you and, let, and, and you let us know what God's doing in your life. I hope that you can be with us for our next broadcast on supernatural change. And hey, call a friend, call a family, family member. Get a hold of somebody that you know, because I guarantee you, you know someone in your family, you know someone in the workplace, and you have relationships even at church where people are struggling with change. I really believe these messages are going to empower you to experience supernatural change. Again, get a hold of us at Pastor Dwayne. That's Pastor Dwayne, D-U-A-N-E, PastorDwayne.com or area code 580-4040-DSM. Thanks for watching the broadcast.
Hey, we want to take a moment to say thank you to our impact partners for your generosity. It's because of your partnership that we're able to continue to give away Dwayne's teachings completely free. To become a partner, you can visit our website or call the number on the screen. Thanks so much for your generosity and for taking part in our mission to help people grow in Christ. We are living and raising our children and grandchildren in a culture that is permeated with offense. Satan uses offense to destroy every healthy relationship we have in our life. And one of the things I'm excited about within this book is what forgiveness is, how easy God has made it for us to forgive. Erasing Offense can be purchased right now from our website, PastorDwayne.com, or you can purchase it from all major platforms. God loves you incredibly, faithfully, and with the kind of love that is beyond compare. In our union with Christ, Dwayne Sheriff shares revelation about the relationship between Jesus and his bride, the church. This book is available on our website or by calling the number on the screen. Take this opportunity to learn more about God's radical love for you in our union with Christ. Thanks so much for watching. All of our content is available for free because of the generous donations from partners of Dwayne Sheriff Ministries. Visit our website, pastordwayne.com, to find the full message series and to learn how you can help partner with us. We hope you enjoy this message.